<laughs> I'm always thinking of songs. Anytime I think of something, I think of a... Oh, I want to hear that song. Hey, it's Kid Friday. It's show 216. We do the show because you're a kid in a digital world. I'm Dave, and wow, Apple made an announcement officially. There is a date set when they are going to reveal the next iPhone. So instead of speculation, I'll tell you the date, and then we'll talk about it after that. Also, um, we were going to continue our back-to-school special, which, uh, you know, I even made a nice little banner for it. And last show, we talked about smart boards. I said we're going to continue that. Well, um, the back-to-school special... Late start. We're having a late start because my aunt and uncle came in to town and they wanted to go to the state fair. Now, you may think, state fair, this is the biggest state fair in the United States. Now, Kid Friday is, it, Kid Friday is viewed in over 200 countries around the world. So I, I'm having a map and uh, I'll show you where, uh, you know, which state we went to and all that stuff. So, um, and we learn a lot. A lot of technology at the fair. A lot of cool stuff. A lot of food that's bad for you. Mm. I'm looking for one right now. Wow. You can get deep fried candy bars. You can. I, I kid you not. Uh, and this is real. Deep fried Twinkies. Someone in the office said they got one and it was delicious. I passed. I had some deep-fried pickles. It's got to be deep-fried or on a stick. Deep-fried or on a stick. Seems like. All right. Um, so, with that said, we're, oh, man, there's some cool stuff. I bust some people. This woman is trying to honk a cord, a charging cable. It'll charge your phone in a third of the time. Come on. Really? That's my... There's some fun stuff coming up, Just, and a cute bunny. So come on, all right. It is. Uh, it's two sixteen. Let's get going. Kid Friday. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. Oh. <laughs> Let's get this party started. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Kid Friday brought to you by Story Cub Video Picture Books. It is story time all the time. Bedtime or anytime. Wow. It's always a perfect time for a story. Video Picture Books. You can. Real people. Real people reading stories to you. Written by amazing authors that... I have beautiful illustrations. Story Cub, a little picky. on. Uh, it's all good stuff. It is parent recommended. It is educator approved. It is story time 24-7. You can take it to the mall. You can take it in the car. You can take it on a camel ride. You can take it on a Jeep adventure. You can take it on your tour bus. You can take it on your bicycle, but watch where you're going. Don't watch Story Cub while riding your bicycle. Just saying. I went for a bicycle ride the other day and got poured on. Big time. Took three days for my shoes to dry out. But thought we're talking about Story Cub. Kind of getting off subject. So, it's story time all the time. And what more do I need to say? You can find it in iTunes Podcast. Show some love for Story Cub in there if you do that. Or you can find Story Cub at StoryCub.com. How clever uh, 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 How clever of a name. It's called Story Cub, and the website is StoryCub.com. 
Wow. Hey, Kid Friday has one. Call KidFriday.com. <laughs> Who knew? All right, Story Cub, thanks for being a sponsor right here on Kid Friday. <laughs> All right, so, um, <clears throat> all right, wow. Let's talk about the State Fair. Uh, for, oh, no, well, let's talk about Apple. Apple, September 12th, Apple officially sent out uh, invitations to so come to the Steve Jobs Theater on their campus there in uh, Cupertino, and uh, they're going to be announcing, they're going to be talking about officially the uh, next iPhone. So September 12th, we'll cover it after that. We could speculate all we want, but why? Okay, so there you go. That is the news there. Also, you know, we we're going to do, we we're going to continue our back to school special. We did, uh, we covered smart boards on the last show. Uh, unfortunately, we got a late start. Oh, that's, ooh, that's coming up. Never mind about that. Wow. All right, late start because of the state fair thing. All right, so I'm going to tell you about state fair. State Fair that I'm referring to that I went to with my aunt and uncle. Oh, per, first, sorry, time out. The good folks at Mighty, if you're a Spotify user, you know I love it. And uh, if you're a Spotify user, on the last show we also mentioned uh, this, which is the Mighty. And um, it will take your Spotify and it'll store it in there for offline. So you don't have to use your... You don't have to use the data on your phone or the storage on your phone or drain the battery or any of that stuff. Uh, so we're going to uh, the good folks at Mighty are getting us a uh, Mighty to review. The Mighty comes in three colors, gray, orange, and another color. <laughs> I forget. I forget the, which out. Maybe it's black. I, I don't know. It comes in three colors. But it's specifically made to use for Spotify, and it has a headphone jack. Wow. That's good. So, we'll tell you about that. Uh, uh, we're going to do an extensive review on the Mighty, and uh, that'll be coming up on an, an upcoming show. All right, enough of that. All right, uh, I went with my aunt and uncle to the Minnesota State Fair. And you say, what? Minnesota State Fair? What are you talking about? Where's Minnesota? I mean... Kid Friday's viewed in over 200 countries. Where the heck is Minnesota? I will show you where Minnesota is. Minnesota's in the United States. I circled it for you. Uh, it's in the middle of the United States, but on the upper part. It borders Canada to its north. North and South Dakota to the west. Wisconsin to the east. Iowa to the south. And there it is. Smack dab it's called the Upper Midwest, the area there. So that's where Kid Friday is uh, broadcasting from, the big city in uh, in Minnesota. And so took the aunt and uncle to the State Fair. What State Fair? That's right, the Minnesota State Fair. You know why? This is according to Wikipedia, which is semi-believable. Uh, it is the largest state fair in the United States by average daily attendance. It is also the second largest state fair in the United States by total attendance, trailing only by the state of Texas, which generally runs twice as long as the Minnesota State Fair. So, that being said, last year, Minnesota, the Minnesota State Fair, uh, set a record uh, attendance of 1,943,000 and 19 people. And um, its biggest day, single day, was also broken last year. 260,374 people in one day. In one day. That's a lot of people to maneuver. And let me tell you, whew, if you got a stroller and a couple kids, <laughs> good luck. So, getting back to the state fair. This is a big state fair. And they have a lot of competitions. A lot of people enter their animals to... Uh, now, I can show you the Midway and all the rides and stuff. I, I'll show you, you know, something. But, uh, uh, fry, fry, but here, how about this? Fried olives on a stick. Okay? Does that sound healthy? I don't know. Do you like olives? I don't know. Doesn't matter. Not interested. Just saying. 
Uh, so the state fair. So I uh, had a chance to talk to some really interesting people. Um, first, you see, I'm just I'm just gonna just throw it all out there. Is that a cute picture of a couple bunnies that were in competition at the Minnesota State Fair? Look at the one on the left, little droopy doopy. Cookie dookie. And I now so you may say, ah, oh, the, the rabbit, you know, on the left, what a cutie. What a cutie. Well, what about the one on the right? I got this is all exclusive Kid Friday stuff. Look at this. Exclusive video. That bunny on the right. I don't know its name. Let's call it Kid Friday. That is a cute bunny. If you ask me, that's a cute bunny. I like that bunny. That bunny is cute. And it's a bunny. And it was at the state fair. All right. So a um, lot of animals in competition, right? So um, there's one animal. I think he, I think he was just there because he was so large. There's no competition for lard. You know what a boar is? B O A R. Google it. Regardless, check. Look at this. This is a. This is this is Rocky. All right. Look at this. He's sleeping, taking a nap. But look at Rocky. Wow. How much do you think Rocky weighs? In U.S. measurements. Sorry, I know we should be using metric, uh, and grams and kilograms and all that stuff. But uh, in U.S. pounds, uh, I'm going to show you a sign that was right above Rocky. Rocky taking a little snooze. Look at that. 1,400 pounds. Rocky could squish you like there's no tomorrow. I'm telling you that right now. Rocky could squish the whole third grade. Wow. 1,400 pounds for Rocky. Big boy, big boy. All right, so my aunt and uncle, okay? So they, they want to go to the fair. And so first off, uh, there's this, that uh, when we're looking at Rocky and we're in the, I think they call it the swine bar, the swine, the swine building, something like that. So they got a couple pig hats putting them on there. Now, lucky I was there because I saved their life. I am, I should work at the beach because I'm a lifesaver. They were about to get mauled by this bear and I came in and rescued them. That's a big bear. That's a big bear. I'm not going to tell you how I did it. I'm not even going to say if I really did it. I'm not even going to say that's a real bear. I'm just saying. Now, they have cheese curds at the fair. What are they? I don't know. They're all over the place. Cheese. There must be cheese in them, but they're curds. I know what they are. All over the place. All right. So, as we move on, I busted. So they wanted to. So my aunt and uncle wanted to look at some of the stuff people are selling at the fair. Different stuff. And this uh, girl had. Uh, she was selling these really long. Um, Charging cords for your phone. I'm going to tell you how to do it a lot cheaper, by the way. But um, I'm 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 I was, a, I was a little skeptic regarding her claims. So I'm looking for the video right here. Here it is, right here. Let's, let's watch this. Down to the size that you want. Take a zip tie, a twist tie, or even a piece of tape, and you can make this cord any size. But what makes the cord really unique has absolutely nothing to do with the length of the cord. It has to do with what's inside. Inside is a copper fiber that attaches to a lightning fast USB. It'll charge your phone literally a third of the time as a regular charger. Now, at the end, we don't make these out of plastic, we make them out of metal. And we fuse that metal to a polycarbon fiber, and we wrap the entire thing in Kevlar. It makes this cell phone cord, cell phone cord absolutely indestructible. 
so indestructible, in fact, that we can offer you a lifetime warranty. But don't, don't you have to plug it? You still need to plug it oh, in. Oh, yeah, yeah. You need to plug it in. So, you need the, so, you, so you're saying this is faster than a, any other than USB? A cord, than a regular exactly. USB? Exactly. Like you buy an iPhone and the cord, this is faster than like you would get? Well, I don't know the answer to that. I know, I'm, just, I'm, I'm not going for that one. Yeah, I'm just saying it's pretty, you know, fast. Talking. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, it's interesting. So, uh, it turned yeah, from... It turned from the fastest cord into, I don't know, I just know it's fast. Um, because you still have to plug it into one of these adapters. I have one right there, but I'm afraid I'm going to... Uh, but uh, regardless, you need to plug your cord into that. And that car, that cord is, and of course they have, uh, you know, a lifetime guarantee, which means, eh, I'm just, I have no idea about this company. Uh, probably something like, you know, just uh, send your cord back and nineteen dollars for shipping and handling, and we'll replace your cord. Uh, so if you want a long cord for your phone or something, like it doesn't quite reach the bed or whatever. I'm going to tell you. It's obvious. It didn't hit me for a while, though. If you really want a, you know, a long cord, do this. Go ask mom and dad. Hey, do you have an extension cord? Just plug that into the wall. And then the extension cord comes over to your bed where you're hanging out. And then you can plug your phone into the extension cord that you already have in your house or apartment or uh, igloo, wherever, wherever it is you're watching Kid Friday. And you got yourself a long cord. How easy is that? Anyway, um, the claims are something else. Hey, you want to see a giant slide? Hey, let's check this out. Do you want to do that? Why? No, I was going to get you a ticket. They have a year pass. You can stay all season. That's a great slide. Now, if uh, yeah, what you do is you take a, a potato sack, and if you know what a potato sack is, if, uh, if there's a Five Guys, it's a restaurant near you, and you walk in there, you see these uh, bags of potatoes because they, use, they make french fries, and they just kind of keep them out in the restaurant. So you take the empty ones, and that they have there, you get to go up there and slide down. It is a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Um, so I'm going to show you some little brand new little baby pigs. But before that, let's learn how big, what's what's the deal with the pigs? Let's take a look at this. Uh, so there you go. All the information, pigs weigh. One, look at that. They get, they get big pretty quick, huh? Wow. That's quite. That's quite a pig. That's quite. They, 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 well, we already saw Rocky. That's a four, though. But look at these. These are uh, little piglets, and I forget how old they were. They were like <laughs> less than a week old. That, that I know. They're under a heat lamp, and they're snoozing, and they're just hanging out. The little baby pigs, uh, hanging out there. And speaking of hanging out, look at this pig. Look at that. I put two pictures on this for you. Went by to say hi to this pig. Stuck his tongue out at me, I think. Do pigs have tongues? Look at that. He was like saying, it's like he got me. He totally got me, that pig. That, that pig. It's like I went up and, you know, like I was going to tease it or something. Maybe that's what the pig thought. I don't know. Came up and just, you know. Uh, and then, uh, you, you're not going to see it, but uh, right after uh, I'm I'm looking at this goose, and I, I get a little too close to the the cage. Boom! He got me. Didn't bite or anything, but it was freaked me out. Uh, so this happens ju just right after that. And wow, you want to hear what a real goose sounds like? You will hear it. Uh, you will hear it in this. <laughs> he got me. <laughs> That's a cool looking dog. Is that what they're? Yeah. They're goose. <laughs> there you go. That is uh, an authentic goose sound. Just saying about that. 
So after that, I took a peek over. We go into a couple different buildings. It's interesting when you leave the the building with all the pigs. There's like a booth for um, bacon that you can buy. When you leave the the poultry area, it, it, they're selling like chicken nuggets. Like, can't you move that a little further away, maybe? A little bit. Anyway, whilst in the cow barn, I guess that's what it's called, I saw this girl, and she was she was trimming her cow, and I was really interested. Her name's Aiden, and she's super nice, super nice girl. And, um, she, well, here, let's just watch this and uh, let the video speak for itself from the fair. So I, I just ran across Aiden, and Aiden, uh, you got some shears there. First off, who, who do we have here? This is Ari. Art? Ari. Ari. Did you name him? <laughs> you did. Why? How, how'd you come up with Ari? Uh, I just thought it was a cute name for her. Did you? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, hold on, we're gonna say hi to Ari. Hi, Ari. Ari's eating. So, so what are you, so what are you doing? Um, I'm clipping the hair off her to make her look pretty for the show. And when's the show? On Wednesday. Around Wednesday. So, oh, so you're taking the early preparations. And when you're shaving, how, what, what are you trying to do? What, how do you, you want to, is there a certain length or style? You just want to cut their hair off, but keep like the top hair and the belly hair and then just this hair here. And then if you cut the rest of the hair off, it makes them look pretty. Okay, well we're going to watch you in action. Is that alright? Okay, go ahead. Go for it. Look at this. Does the cow not like it sometimes or? Sometimes they don't like it. Maybe I should leave you two alone, huh? Okay. Uh, hey, could you just wave to everyone? Thank you. All right, thanks Aiden for showing us. I've never seen this before. I'm just saying, I've, who knew? It's true, she's like the great clips for cows. Giving her the trim. Getting her ready to try and get that blue ribbon. Uh, so, <laughs> while well, I'm talking to Aiden, my aunt all of a sudden becomes an expert on cows. <laughs> Although we're actually going to hear from a real expert coming up here. Um, but uh, I, I was like, wow, where'd you, where, where'd you learn all this? This is an Ayrshire cow. She's only um, a baby right now, and that's why she doesn't have an udder. But when they are about two years old, I believe the gentleman said they breed them have babies and then they have the udder. They develop that udder for milking. Have you ever used udder cream? No. Uh, we'll get, uh, you try it out. I'll, I'll, I'll get you some. <laughs> Thanks. So there you go, my aunt. All of a sudden, new career, cow expert. Uh, let's hear from, so I met this guy, John, and I just missed the actual milking of the cows. But this guy is like the professor of cows. I mean, if you, you know what? Just absorb all this information, and then if you go to school and someone's talking about cows and milk, all of a sudden you're the expert because this guy, this guy covers the bases as far as I'm concerned. And. So listen to uh, John here, and he's going to show you the technology, how you, how you milk a cow, besides all this other stuff, but the actual technology used, you're going to see it too. Uh, unfortunately, not in action. I just missed it. But this is good. What kind of different cows do we have, and, and specifically the cows that give milk that, that we're talking about? Okay, the main breeds that we have in the United States, the main breed, the one that everybody knows as... The, the cow is the black and white cow, and that's the Holstein. There's a similar one 
uh, which is the red and white Holstein, which is just as it sounds. A very similar looking cow is the Ayrshire, and there's also the Guernsey, the Jersey, the Brown Swiss, and the Milking Shorthorn. Ooh, we're not going to have a test, are we? No, okay, no, okay, not okay, at all. Okay. All right. All right. And, uh, and then there are also there are also many other breeds uh, in the world, uh, some of which are used for crossbreeding, such as the Swedish Red and the Montpelier, but, but they're not very common. But mom and dad go to the store, they buy a gallon of milk, it's usually... Uh, generally, uh, like I said, about 90% of the milk comes from Holstein, the black and white cow. And there's no cows in here right now, but can you just tell it? Could you explain the equipment that we're uh, so, that we're looking at here, or what this person is doing right now? This person is cleaning off what's uh, the, what would be considered the milking parlor, and uh, the units uh, have been back flushed. It's called, which is flushing water and a solution through them so that there's no transfer of uh, uh, any disease causing bacteria from one cow to the next. And so she's getting everything cleaned off. When the uh, cow comes in, they would put her number into that computer and that computer will store the number, her number, as well as the pounds of milk that she will produce. And they will take those uh, uh, devices, they call the milking units, and they will uh, place them on the cow. They're under vacuum and they will place one on each teat and uh, that will milk the cow out, uh, milk the, take the milk out of the cow. So they clean them really well. I can see how she's really, yep. really cleaning them. Absolutely, they want to keep any kind of foreign matter out of the milk supply. And how, how much milk can you get out of a cow in, you know, in a day? A kid, exhibitors. Stand by. The Are we still? And so out of a out of a cow in a day can vary a lot where they are in their like lactation. That means that uh, it varies how long since they've had their last calf, and uh, it also depends on the breed. The Holstein, the black and white cow, milks the most quantity, but it has less butter fat and protein than some of the other breeds. A Jersey cow, the little brown cow with the black eyeliner on her. Uh, she is known for high protein and high butter fat, which is better for making uh, more cheese. The more protein and the more the more solids, basically, uh, makes for a larger quantity of cheese per hundred pounds of milk. And uh, so, an average cow in uh, Minnesota might milk about uh, uh, ten, uh, eight to ten gallons of milk per day. Wow! So. I just learned more about milk and cows than I have my entire life. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Wave to the kids. Can you wave to the kids? Have a nice day. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, I, it's true. I, I learned more. Of course, there's a lot going on. Uh, but, man, talk about just, you know what? Watch that part again. And then go to school when someone brings up milk in the cafeteria. All of a sudden, you are the expert. Wow, that guy knows. Pretty amazing. Um, we'll get out of the, uh, we'll get out of the animals for just a second. So, um, I was having a little fun. This woman, uh, was, uh, selling some kind of, uh, stuff, you know, storage containers that you can keep in your refrigerator or whatever. And she say, you, you'll see, cause I say it on there as well, but she says something like it's dishwasher safe. And then what do I do? I ask her if it's dishwasher safe. Why? Because my aunt and uncle are looking at some humidifier. I got, I got nothing to do, so uh, I just had a little fun. Me? Why me? Because I want to I want to see you do your thing. Oh, you're taking a video. Is that okay? All right. Because you're so good, I want to I want to emulate you. Okay. <laughs> so these guys are so calm. There's no rubber, no plastic, no PPA. They're freezable, microwavable, and dishwasher safe. This little button right here is actually a vent. You just pop that open. It has two little air holes. So things like strawberries are going to last longer in the fridge with a little bit of airflow. Close it up tight. And All right, now I'm going to a message her and ask her a question. Freezer. Do 
you say there was dishwasher safe? Yes, freezer, microwave, and dishwasher. So that means that there's no BPA, so you don't have to worry about that. I'm going to ask her about the BPA. Now, the other thing is they never stain. You can put your spaghetti sauce on the floor, your pasta, your chips, your chili, and it will not stain. Now, it's going to be dry. 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 It's going and then for the microwave, just put it on the loose leaf so it doesn't blow and make a mess on the ceiling. You can put it in the freezer? Yep, freezer. Freezer, microwave, dishwasher. All right, we're done. So, so there you go. Well, yeah, she didn't miss a beat. She was she, she was really good. She didn't miss a beat. So uh, anyway, that's uh, that's what I did. Uh, let's see. Now, um, I met this other guy, really cool guy, and... When you hear how many years he's been going to this fair, because I forgot about 4-H, the 4-H club. Google it. Don't have time to cover it. But um, uh, they're, they're trimming the, the, the sheep for competition. And uh, just so you know, so you can, I'm not sure if it's in this one or maybe it's in another one. I'm not sure, but... Um, after they trim, they put like this kind of a coat over it so they don't get dirty. But check this out. This guy was really cool, really cool, and just kind of hanging out. And and we learned something about about these sheep because um, I don't think about sheep too much unless I'm trying to go to sleep. I think of them jumping over a fence. John, you're here with sheep. Is that, yep. is that, is that the correct term? I didn't know if there's yep. another. And uh, you're going into competition, is that right? Tomorrow morning is the show. Tomorrow yep. morning, okay. Is that your daughter? Uh, step granddaughter. Step granddaughter, oh, okay, great. And then what, she's grooming the sheep. That is a beautiful sheep. Yeah. What, yeah. what, um, what do you have to do to prepare a sheep for competition? Well, in this breed, about three months ago, we sheared all the wool off. Mm -hmm. And then we get it, let it grow out, and give it a bath, couple baths, and then now we're parting the wool, and we're going to try to make it as smooth as we can for the show tomorrow morning. And tomorrow morning, and then so what's the best? I mean, it looks like a giant dog brush in a sense. Yeah, so, it's a wool cart for just like they use to pull the wool when they get done shearing. And, and when they judge the sheep, what are they? What is the? What are they looking for? The judges? Uh, there's certain well, criteria. Yeah, this. This session here, the first four days were the wool breeds. This is the meat breeds. So these are going to be judged more on uh, their size and how much thickness they have, and because they're the they're the breeds raised to, for the meat. Do they do they actually do a the, like a tape measure or no? It's just no, more of a sense of I, yeah. They okay. have a guy that will handle them and feel them to see how long bodied they are and that. Uh, the price, the high price cuts are from the last rib back, so you want the length to be in the, from the last rib back and things like that. Ooh. John, the kids don't want to hear that. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, they like lamb no. chops. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Well, good luck tomorrow. Thank you. And how, how, how many years have you been coming here? Uh, me, it's been about uh, probably 40. 40 years. Yeah. And how many of those have you been showing? 40 years. So your parents or grandparents? No, yeah. Or? Well, I'm old. You don't look old. <laughs> no, I, I started showing in 4-H. Uh, I think my oh, first year. Sure. Yeah, my first year here was, I was 11. So I turned 57, what, Monday. So, so 46 years. Just so about 120 years, is that yeah. right? It's 126 yeah. years. Yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday. Yeah, thank you. All right, good luck tomorrow. Yeah. What a cool guy, huh? What, what, what a cool guy, hanging out. Uh, all right, I had some more fun. We're getting away from the barn again. So my aunt and uncle are looking at garlic in a jar, I think, something like that. While they were doing that, I was, uh, again, we're in an area where they're selling a bunch of stuff, just like the... The Tupperware lady there, whatever. Uh, and they had this little pony called the Pony Pal. And I said, you know, I have someone who might be interested in it, but 
I, I don't could I could I tape you demonstrating the pony pal? Now the pony pal is made for kids. This guy's not a kid, but he gave me a demo. Here, check this out. Ready? What, what's it called? It's a pony pal. Oh, party pal. Pony pal. Oh, pony pal. Oh, pony pal. It's okay. And how much is it? Uh, they're two ninety nine here at the fair. Okay. All right. Ready? He's ready. All right. Styles, I guess. Well, we have zebras, unicorns, and then horses. Oh, oh I didn't see that. We have three yeah, different yeah. colors of horses. Thank you very much. Oh. So there you go. Exclusive demonstration of the Pony Pal by a guy who shouldn't be on the Pony Pal. Three hundred dollars. It's kind of cool though. Um, so <laughs> I just thought it'd be fun. Just thought. So they give uh, ribbons out for everything. Uh, here's some award-winning apples, okay? I saw award-winning flowers. I saw an award-winning, I'm telling you, it was a stick. It looks like someone went in their backyard, broke a stick off a tree, they entered it, and, and they won a ribbon. It must be some kind of special breed of stick. I, need, I was going to take a picture of it, but I'm like, it's maybe I'm missing something. I'm sure I am, but it was, it was a stick. Won, won an award from a tree. Yeah, a stick. You may have an award-winning stick in your yard or in your na neighborhood or wherever you are. So keep that in mind. Um, all right, we have a lot more, but we got to end this show at some point. Let's take a quick look. Because there's so much stuff. Uh, here, let's look at a little popcorn. What's your favorite? What's the top seller? I think it's Alpena. Alpena? So there you go. Uh, I also found out jalapeno is a little too spicy for me. Love those beef steaks, snacks though. Um, so you, you saw this much of the state fair. So if you get a chance, uh, to come to Minnesota, and, and uh, we had beautiful weather when we were out there. Uh, try and make it. Look it up. It, it's a. It is a big. It is a big fair. It's a big fair. I wonder if the record is broken from last year. So just under two million people attended the Minnesota State Fair last year, and uh, my aunt and uncle came in. I'm out of town and want to go to the fair, and I saved them from this grizzly bear. Thank goodness I was there, because uh, then I, no, aunt, no aunt and uncle, you know, right? We had a lot of fun. A lot of fun. So, with that said, I think maybe, you know what, uh, we'll just wrap things up here. Show you where the fair is again on the map. Uh, uh, the Minnesota State Fair. And there it is right there in the state of Minnesota. That's, the, that's a map of the United States for you international uh, viewers. Uh, and that is, uh, you know, what? make your way over. You contact us at Kid Friday, and uh, we'll put you on the show. Absolutely. And, hey, by the way, if you happen to live in uh, uh, the metropolitan area of Minneapolis and St. Paul, which, uh, see, there's... There's two cities, two big cities, and they're right next to each other. So they're called the Twin Cities, Minneapolis and St. Paul. So if someone says, what are the Twin Cities? 
Minneapolis, St. Paul. Uh, if you are uh, watching uh, Kid Friday and you're in the Twin Cities, uh, contact us uh, via our Facebook page. Uh, and maybe we'll have you on as a guest, huh? And by all means... Everyone should join our Facebook page because we've been lame and we haven't we haven't done anything. So, right, go ahead, post some questions, post your favorite app, your favorite uh, website, your favorite uh, brand of socks, maybe not that, but something uh, technical. And September twelfth, Apple announcing the big iPhone news. By the way. Here's my iPhone. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I, I dropped it, cracked my glass. I don't know if you can see it. Probably not. No. Uh, have a really nice case for it. Just wasn't using it. Let that be a lesson to me. So, talk to you on the next Kid Friday. Tell your friends about Kid Friday. Write reviews in iTunes, uh, on YouTube, wherever it is you're accessing Kid Friday. Share and spread the, the Kid Friday love. All right? Get back to school. It's school time. Maybe where you are. We'd like to end with the beginnings of 2017 Kid Friday production, All Rights Reserved. Don't mess with us or we will... Figure something out. I'll figure, I'll figure something out. All right. Talk to you on the next show. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. Oh! <laughs> Let's get this party started. All right! Yeah.